Hello, this is Joshua Anderson with Anderson Sales and Service in Crestwood, Kentucky. We invite you to come in and take a look at everything that we have to offer here, starting with our Cub Cadet lawn tractors. Also, the Zero Turn with Steering Wheel RZTs by Cub Cadet. For those of you who have small yards, we do have residential Honda mowers in stock and available. If you're in need of more industrial or commercial grade, we also have the Xmark Walk Behind Commercial as well as the Zero Turn mower. For those small farmers out there that are in need of tractors, we have the Kubotas and the RTV side-by-side -side units. Make sure you stop in and talk to the knowledgeable staff here at Anderson Sales and Service. Well, our mission is making your life easier with quality products and quality service. Hello, this is Debbie Crawford with Southern Outdoors and I have driven to Southern Indiana where we're going to meet with uh, Brent Leach here. He actually has taken a childhood passion for turkey hunting to a whole new level and he's started his own business and now it's a family business. So Brent, tell us what you're actually doing here with these. Well, as you said, it started off as childhood. Family was brought up hunting, fishing. That comes from Trimble County and playing at Hoosier. Get that out there first, too. <laughs> but uh, that's pretty much all there was to do. If right. you didn't catch it or kill it, you didn't eat sometimes. That's so right. That's how we was brought up. It kept the family together. Turkey season, we was actually allowed to start hunting half of Trimble County in 89 or 90. One side of 421 yeah. could hunt turkeys right. and the other side couldn't. So, so after two years, it opened it up to the whole to the whole county and it, it lit a fire in me and I had a great uncle that had a big influence in it and had a big influence in a lot of these calls and design in them. And right. It's took me to, to building these, to making them. Uh, I got involved in some competition calling. Got lucky enough in 2008 to win the Indiana State. Won it again in 2009. Won it again in 2011. What that's done is it qualified me to call the Grand National. Right. Got to go down to Tennessee, get up on the big stage with all the guys you see on TV and call with them. 2011, I actually tied Mitchell Johnson to make the cut. They yes. take uh, th 12 callers out of the original 46 to make the cut. I called for 12th. He beat me in a call off. He got to go. I didn't. That's the closest I got. But still, it was a lot of good experience. Got to meet a lot of good people. Uh, it, it's it, like I said, it's kind of what started all this. Was on a couple of staffs and then I met a good friend of mine up in Pennsylvania one time. Kind of showed me how to make some mouth calls and stuff and come home and decided it was something we could do ourselves and keep it as a family thing. And now, how long ago was that that you started making the, the mouth calls? Everything we got here come along in 2009. Is when it became the internet, uh, started the internet, started the sales and all that. And like we was talking about with the calls, one thing on the pot call, well, I said my great uncle had a lot to do with this. He had trouble, he ran his hand in a square hay baler, messed his hand. Right. That so he had a hard time gripping around pot. What we ended up doing when I met with the gentleman who turns my pots for me, these come all the way from Pennsylvania. He had several different styles. I said, I need something that's, that you can grip. So he had a 14-sided pot. I said, okay, that's great. I said, be nice if it had something on the side. He came up with the rings. So now, not only is it 14-sided. Gives you more grip. But it's got rings. When that sets you in your hands, it's not going nowhere. It can be wet, cold, slick morning. It's going to stay there. Well, I like it, too, because I've got small hands. Mm -hmm. So when I try to hold one, it's hard for me to, to grip it and keep it still. I usually have to put it against me yep. to do it. Yep. But with this one, I don't have to. I can actually hold it in my hand and not move. These are actually made out of sycamore. I have some coming. They're not ready yet we're still messing with the soundboard the placement and stuff in them it's going to be cherry so that's oh something that'll be coming. pretty yeah a little more something different a lot of people are scared of the sycamore there's no need to be scared or right out of the pack this is an aluminum it that's a nice sound calls, so. that's a nice sound and then do you make you make the box ones also uh, yes they are actually sent to us uh I'm not going to lie to you, the same gentleman in Pennsylvania is the one that's come up with the design for us. Right. It's double logoed, got it on the side and the top. What we actually build in-house that I'm building, we glue the pots together. Right. We get the parts from him. I actually make the mouth calls. Yes. Every part of the mouth call we make here with the press, the tape cutter, getting my family involved with that. My daughter helps me out a lot at doubles production time when she's down there with me drag the wife into it as well well that's really nice though but i mean when you can sit down with a family member especially your kids whether it's at dinner or making something like this they tell you all kinds of things yeah it, it, exactly so. and sometimes they do when they don't mean to so. <laughs> that's it, a good it, part it, though it that's... definitely slip some info out of it. yes i like that though we got seven different styles of mouth calls uh 
everybody's got a preference. Everybody's got a favorite. So there's seven different styles. It's a couple of them have the same cut, but yet they're still made different. Right. Uh, for instance, Old Reliable and the Sweet Talker. It's a it's an inverted it's a inverted V cut. Both of them are. This is a two reed. This is a three reed. Therefore, they're going to sound different. Right. Takes a little bit of different air as well. Um, the actual the uproar, the heyday, and the vengeance are all modified shipwreck cuts. The vengeance is a two reed. Like both reeds are latex. Heyday has a latex reed on top of it, and it has prof under it. It's a whole lot nasalier, nas more nasally, more na nasally. Oh, I understand. Whatever that word is, I'm trying to say. Yeah. Puts a different sound to it, and then uproar is three reed it's all three latex right we have a ghost cut style a lot of people do kiki run late fall turkey season the the poach are whistling to the mom mom's whistling at the hen it's a two and a half reed a whole lot of your competition callers nowadays are yelping they're yelping on the ghost cut so i'll let that secret out well now here's something there are a lot of people that are starting to go hunting now that mm -hmm. didn't when they were younger. Correct. And uh, I know Tim Beck and I were talking before about how a lot of women are going hunting. Correct. And they don't understand the difference between uh, the different your, styles of cuts. The cuts and right. what, the, what it makes it do and, and what it sounds like. So if you could kind of explain the difference in the cuts and what it actually mm -hmm. creates. What we can do is we'll run one of each and I'll run them as I talk about it. If that's well, we I, can do that in a few minutes. Yeah, yep, that'd be we'll great. That would be great. And, we'll and then. The and it's the same with the pots. I have three different. I have aluminum, I have it in glass, yes. and we have it in slate. Uh -huh. The glass in the sycamore ones is bead blasted. Now what this means is that you don't have to surface it. It's right. a it's a hunter friendly. It's right out of the pack. It's ready to go. It's it's got a texture. You're probably have a hard time seeing it on the camera. Most of a glass call, you have to surface them. Right. You got to start with the rough sandpaper, and then you work your way down to thin. This has got that on it right out of the pipe. That's nice. I like that. The calls have a rollover yelp, the two-tone. Everybody tries to get high and then low. The placement of the soundboard, they all have a glass soundboard in them. The distance there and the size, it's, it, it, it's, it's an easy call to run. So it makes it that much better for hunting especially. Now, you do something with your calls, too, here at the house. You don't just keep them all sitting out on the table or in a box. You put some in the refrigerator. Yeah, that's the mouth call we was talking about. When you're using your mouth calls, a good way to preserve them is uh, keep them cool. It slows down the bacteria growth between them. Right. Another tip I'm going to show you, if I can get it out of there. That was a, let me get a bigger one out here. I'll show you in the call. Plastic paper clips. I break them off. So you, it will dry out inside. Yep, you separate the reeds. If you leave, if you don't put that in there, you throw it up in the dashboard of your truck. It gets hot. They stick together. You're done. Right. So I keep them in the refrigerator, and I keep the plastic, the little paper clips in between the reeds. So and the, that keeps. Them. And and you can get these just about anywhere. Walmart or anywhere. Yeah. Some people use toothpicks, and which is fine, but you got to watch. You puncture oh, or tear the reeds. So I'd these, rather use paper clips. Yeah, I file them. If I'm gonna pay for a yeah a call, I don't want to mess it up with them. So that's that's a little tip there in itself. Yeah. Well, we're gonna check out some of these calls in a minute, and Brent is gonna actually show us how they all work and the different sounds that they make. So don't go away. This is Brant Morris from Anderson Sales and Service. Uh, come in and take advantage of some of the great bonus bucks on the ATVs and motorcycles Honda has going on right now. From motorcycles to mower, we've got you covered. Give us a call at 812-273-4262 and like us on Facebook. So the first thing you're going to show us are the mouth calls and why you put them in the refrigerator. Yep, okay. So we put them in there, like I say, it helps preserve them and make them last a little longer. The other tip was the, if I get them out of there, was the paper clips. I put those in it to keep the reeds separate. It also lets air get in between so bacteria doesn't doesn't grow in them. So they'll dry out after you've used them. they dry them. out, exactly, exactly. You throw them up on the, the dash of the truck and they stick together and you go to separate them and you turn them and then you have to buy another call for me, which is good for me, but it's bad <laughs> for you. So this is Vengeance. Uh, one of my favorite of the bunch I make, it's easy to blow. I'm not going to eat the paper clip, don't panic. Kind of get it wet before you pull it out. There's a good idea too, because it will stick and you will tear the reed if you don't. It's a two reed chip rack. You can do about anything on 
the majority of these calls. Some of them do have a specialty. I'll kind of talk about it as we go, but we're playing yep. Another thing about yipping, people, a lot of people do it different. Some people say oot. Some people say whelp. You read on the back a lot of the calls back 15 years ago, it told you to say chick. <laughs> I kind of, they call it huffing, which that's not a good thing in most people's oh. ears, but they call it huffing the call, you're saying, you're yes. just an air. <laughs> to me, that sounds more natural. It'll cluck, it'll purr. Soft, you can get a little loud. Too read, too read. It's easier to talk when you don't have any mouth. <laughs> too read, you don't want to really hammer them. It can, but. Now, you've been doing this since you were a kid in high school in Trimble County. Yes, ma'am. And you not only ended up starting your own business, but you do all kinds of uh, competitions. Yes. Uh, it's slowed down now. Uh, kids get older. Uh, so after a while, the window was available for me to get out more. But I've, I've called in Tennessee and Pennsylvania, Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana. Now, how many of those competitions have you won? I've, I've won or placed in all the states I've mentioned. That's uh, awesome. So, Indiana, I was a state, I won a state champion in 08 and 09 right. and 2011. And then they haven't had one since then. And, and that qualified me to call in the Grand Nationals. I've been down there on the big stage four times. Got lucky there. Uh, almost made the cut in 2011, so we got close there. Made it was in the top, so I was the top 13 out of 46 callers right. in the nation. Well, that's pretty good. So yeah, there's nothing to, sh to hold your head down about, I guess. No. Now, but, some of the reasons that you practice, I know your family has something to do with all this business, and Kaylee helps you with this, but somebody helps you practice all yeah, the time. Yeah, my son is autistic. Yes. And he's started when I started fooling with this, when I was getting into the competition stuff back in 2008. A buddy of mine did this stuff for hardcore. He's right. still a good friend of mine. He's the one that kind of got me started. So he was telling me, you know, I, I had the calls in my back pocket or in the glove box. He's like, man, you got to put them in the refrigerator, keep them fresh, keep the reeds in them, keep them separated, put them in something. Well, I'd get them out and be practicing. One of the routines was the video yourself and then go back and watch it. And listen to it. Listen to yourself. You're your best critic. It got to where I was coming home. My son would meet me. As soon as he'd see me pull in, he'd already be in the refrigerator getting the calls out. So this was my excuse to wear them out. I, I couldn't get run out of the house because I was entertaining Jacob as we went right. along. So that, that helps. That was a big plus. And, and to this day, when he's on YouTube, he spends a lot of time YouTube and stuff, watching chainsaws or four-wheelers. But he's on turkey calling competitions and saying owl hooting competitions. He's, he loves it. Whether it's duck calling or this or that, he loves listening to it. So. Well, that's awesome. That gives you a reason to do it. Plus, he's helping you practice. Correct. And then uh, hopefully a, he gives you a funny look, though, when uh, you're not doing it right. Yeah, uh, he knows the difference. He'll pick out <laughs> the ones he likes and the ones he don't. So right. He'll pick out the color of the call he wants to hear, and he knows what I'm going to do with each call. Yeah. So it pays. Now, how time. many different places are these actually sold? I know you're not just here no, locally. No, I'm on the Internet. Of course, you can get it there. you got to be on the World Wide Web nowadays. Oh, yes. But in Carrollton, Kentucky, Globbers, Sporting Goods is selling them. In North Vernon, Indiana, John's Gun Shop, Bait and Guns, got them. Sligo, Kentucky, John Stewart's got a gun shop out there, and John's Guns and Collectibles. Right. Savannah, Tennessee, there's a place down there called the Bow Shack. The connection to Savannah, I don't know how good you can see this, and this is one of the things that's benefited, or one of the benefits or pluses right. to this. St. Jude's and Children's. I got in touch with people at these competitions, and this will be the fourth year we go down and participate in this St. Jude's hunt. It's a it's an awesome experience. It's a chance to give a little something back. Now, you actually take kids hunting when you go down there. Yes, ma'am. That's the coolest part about it. I think if the more we can get kids involved in an activity outside of the couch. Yep. I, yeah, <laughs> I which is think. hard anymore. It's yeah. different than when we was kids right. than it is nowadays. That's all we did. We yep. were outside all the time, but now kids are inside. But I think yep. if you can get them outdoors, it would just be awesome. You know, and the filming that we did with Tim Beck, he said if you could introduce 
one child mm -hmm. to hunting or fishing or boating or whatever, just think how many kids would be outside after you did that. Yep, and, and that's a big part. And one of the big things that I enjoy the most about doing this is first time hunters or kids. Uh, I go I along awesome. to a lot of the local chapters, NWTF chapters have right. banquets and they do youth days and they yes. do stuff. And I've done seminars or actually participated and took a lot of kids hunting and we do a lot of videoing and uh, mainly for ourselves. But in that case, you take a kid out and a kid kills its first turkey. Oh yeah. And then you can give them a copy of that video when they got it from the home. Right. So I, that's something special too to be involved in. And, and it's neat that the, the doors that have opened just from doing this little bit of stuff that I'm doing here at the house. The people and, that you meet and, and the, the friends meet, that you yeah, make. all over the country. It, it's awesome. There's it, good people out there. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, there is. And then you also have a Facebook page. Yes. So they can actually look you up on Facebook, which mm -hmm. is Brent Leach. Yep. And then you, of course, have the different businesses. Yep. So. Yep. And the links to yep, and then the Ridge Top Custom Turkey Calls. Got right. it's on on the web page. I run all the calls and give a little sound fall with it to give them an idea what they're getting. And it, they people have contacted me on as far as the mouth calls part. This is where the custom calls come into play. If I don't have something they like running right. a different style, I don't sell a cutter call, for instance. I can't run one very good. Don't do me much good to sell it if I can't make it sound good. A lot of people love it. I can make whatever they tell me what they're used to running. I can make it. It's we can figure it out. <coughs> Excuse me. Go back and forth, and we'll get it right. Right, right. Well, that's just awesome. Well, you all need to make sure you check this out. Brent Leach and his family are doing an awesome job with these turkey calls, and uh, so I just think it's really cool. If you could go by and and. Check them out, see if they want to take them with you, go out in the woods, see how they work, take a kid with you. And by all means, remember to leave where you are, wherever you're hunting, better than what you found it so that everybody can go back again. Yeah, so, good yeah, good. a lot of people forget to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that gum wrapper doesn't need to be in the pasture with the cows, yeah. so make sure you take it back with you. This is Debbie Crawford with Southern Outdoors. Thanks for watching.